Michigan State University is a place of ideas and innovation, a place where people have always pulled together to keep moving forward, no matter how tough things are. We are in difficult times facing local, national, and global economic challenges. President Luana K. Simon sat down for a frank discussion about the state of the university and why no time is more critical than right now to stay on course and keep finding ways to do our part to keep advancing knowledge and transforming lives. The great news about Michigan State is we remain one of the top 100 uh, research universities in the world. And as we travel around the world, not simply as I travel, but as our members of our team travel, the demand for Michigan State, the respect for Michigan State, and what it does is really growing. So that's the, that's the really good news. If you think about what uh, we look at accomplishments, both in growth of research dollars, uh, uh, Fulbrights, you can go through a whole list of things. The fact that uh, our applications this year are, are growing and will be a record high, all those things suggest a very strong a university and one that's positioned for the future. So in many ways, the state of the university is terrific. It's just that the, the circumstances we're dealing with are awful. And they wear on you as an institution. They wear on you as a family, if you're facing this kind of economic challenge and uncertainty. They wear on you as a department. They wear on you as a college. They wear on you as a university. And we have to find the energy and the strength to continue to have this great momentum at the same time, we deal with very difficult challenges and decisions. And part of that, if you look at any company, any university, and what they're doing, in some ways they're going back to basics. They're going back to basic values. Uh, they're going back to the things that made them great. And Michigan State has an extraordinary advantage in that regard because our fundamental values that came out of this land-grant tradition are as relevant today as they were when we were founded in 1855. And the need to really have cutting edge knowledge uh, be uh, a, a function of how one grows prosperity across all classes of society is a part of our founding and is really what's needed going into the 21st century. At the same time, we were founded to broaden the base of, of scholarship and to be assured that cutting edge scholarship was a part not simply of decisions in the laboratory or at national policy level, but in communities and in households, in small companies as well as large. And we're now trying to, again, take those values and position them for the 21st century in lots of activity. And finally, I think that if you think about the John Hanna decision that global would be a part of our DNA, uh, dating back to the activities in the 1950s when it wasn't fashionable uh, to start a university in Africa or Brazil. And it wasn't fashionable to think about uh, issues globally that could impact one locally and how our local expertise could improve a global economy. That, that piece of, of our history is now the, the, the showcase, the front uh, door of most universities' uh, PR campaigns. And Michigan State has just been doing it uh, for so long and so well. And that will put us in great stead moving forward, not simply the university and its global competition, but the state of Michigan. Michigan has had a, a slower decay of support for public higher education. But if you go to the major uh, privates, uh, the, the crash of their endowments has caused significant dislocation. If you look at the publics around the country, California would be a good example of another state that's often listed uh, with Michigan as having severe structural issues. They're, they're struggling with making decisions. We've tried to do this in the context of a long-term strategy, our values, and a set of things that we need to do to improve the value of a Michigan State degree uh, next week as well as the next decade and 20 years from now. And I think the campus has really rallied to that, uh, to that challenge. It's been extraordinarily difficult. We have the unevenness of uh, unit decisions. So when you're a very big place and you've decentralized a lot of the, the conversations uh, and the discussions, the recommendations, there is a, there is a bit of even, unevenness across units uh, and colleges. And part of what uh, Provost Wilcox Vice President Poston and I have to work on over the, in the next few weeks and months is how to assure the evenness and the fairness of that con 
those conversations at the same time bringing issues to closure. If you think about the university's budget um, and, and our all funds budget has grown to about $1.8 billion in operations. That's not counting the value of land or facilities and all the things that go with the financial accounting. We're about a billion dollars in the combination of state appropriations and tuition and some interest income that's now less than it was three years ago before the economic, the severe global economic challenges. And if, but if you think about that in terms of people, which are the real assets of Michigan State University, on the total uh, uh, 1.8, it's about 53% people. On the general fund, you move up to about 73% people. And then you get down to a department level uh, at, at, at narrow when you take out financial aid and the coal pile and other things that are a part of that billion dollars of general fund, you're about 91 percent people. So the decisions that are being made at a local level really affect people really dramatically. So I think we're in many ways uh, uh, have the right planning framework for the budget. Uh, and with people being such a significant component, it is important to look carefully at the cost related to people. And that's why the health insurance discussions are so important. And I want to really commend uh, so many of our employees, either through uh, discussions in academic governance with faculty and academic staff or through more formal collective bargaining arrangements, who have really understood that we can have quality health care and at the same time reduce costs significantly in a way that hopefully uh, puts the university in a position to preserve jobs and avoid uh, short-term uh, actions that have you seen in other employers. I also am really pleased that uh, we've, we've been able to diversify our funding portfolio on some of our international activities. Uh, being a, a major player, a partner with Gates is, is, is important to us because it also permits us to, to re-energize our Rockefeller connections uh, again, with other funding agencies that, that beyond USAID, which we've been one of the greatest uh, partners, we've got to move beyond that in order to be sure that, that we're going to be competitive uh, for the work we need to do in the future. And I, I really see those, those things happening. And part of it is how we not only say, isn't it great that they're happening, because there are lots of really good news stories there, but how do we essentially push ourselves to be better than everybody else in terms of rate of change uh, that assures our position among these uh, top 100 universities. We have to make sure that our students um, leave Michigan State with the capacity to, to create their own business as well as be a change agent in any business. And we also need to make sure that they can compete any place in the world. And I think we're doing the things that are necessary to uh, increase the probability that that happens. Most of the comments are about uh, why people can't be employed sort of in a job in Michigan. And my view is that I want our graduates to be somebody that, a person that any company anywhere in the world would want. Now, it's our job to figure out how to get those jobs in Michigan. It's not theirs. Our job is to make them internationally marketable and sought after. One of the things that distinguishes us has to be graduate education. And we have to do graduate education at a level that is always pushing the society's uh, expectations about an educated workforce. We have to do PhD research at the highest level so that our graduates are placed at the best places and that they're making a difference uh, in the world of scholarship. And I think that's happening. Uh, and it's just a matter of continuing for that to be possible and increasing the, the, the penetration. And, it's hard, and that's why research grant and contract activity is so important. That's why foundations are important in the humanities and social behavioral sciences, and it's why private dollars are important, particularly in, so, in the social behavioral sciences, arts, and humanities, because those, those are how you support graduate students to do this 
very cutting edge work as a part of, of, of a PhD program. If you look at everything from a financial lens, which is really easy to do, it becomes a zero sum game. Because you essentially trade off one thing for another. Uh, but when you see things as assets, and assets can grow in the future, and you have to sort of align them differently to produce different opportunities, they're still assets, and they don't go away. And if, you, if we can get people to think about the fact that, that there's a lot of energy in creating something new, and that energy is still here. It's not taken away from us because the budget is less, because we're a place of ideas, and we're a place of intellectual vitality and enthusiasm. And those things aren't defined by dollars. Those things are defined by people. And hopefully as we, as we sort through all these difficulties and all the conversations that are occurring, that, that, that Michigan State University's future will be at the heart of what we do. And, and that we're going to try to treat people as humanely as possible, uh, knowing that this is a really difficult time for them. And, and also knowing that we've got people who are performing at really extraordinary levels. Some, again, visible because they're in the spotlight, and some who are invisible but still critically important to what we do. And this is a time to say to them, thank you very much for what you're doing, and to recognize that we are in this together. And we have to continue to be in it together even though it's difficult at times to sort of think about what you do and what we do together uh, in a way that is a 20 percent reduction for the state. We don't deserve that. There's no rational basis for doing it, uh, but it's what it is. So we're going to be the institution that takes the, that essentially recognizes that and we're going to be the institution that is able to take these circumstances and make the best of them so that we're more competitive in the future. What's really fascinating to me as I, as I interact with other university presidents, corporate leaders, uh, community leaders, is that in many ways they regard Michigan State University more positively than we might regard ourselves. And part of that is historically we've been focused on the doing. And, and we've always, and we've been focused on permitting others to use our knowledge and our skill set for their benefit. And those values that were classically land grant are still extraordinarily important as we work in this global economy. So as I look at Michigan State and uh, what it stands for, you, you would have to say that our, our brand, our values, our vision, uh, is gaining much more traction locally, nationally, internationally. That we're more of a player in the, in the conversations that are important to the world, to the country, and to the state. And that the, the ideas of our faculty, our staff, are ideas that are going to be at the forefront of the kind of change necessary for us to look back on this period of our history and say that we really did make a difference. So you, if you were going to pick an institution that you wanted to be bullish on for the future, you'd pick Michigan State. And its values and its approach and its capacity to, to uh, keep uh, values and vision clearly in focus and to make decisions that are for the common good, for the good of a global society. And I think those are the institutions that are going to be invested in in the future. And I also think that, that you never lose sight of the fact that you have to do cutting edge work because this is going to be a knowledge driven economy. And you don't have to sacrifice doing cutting edge work to be connected. And in fact, you can enhance the value of this cutting edge work by being able to be both connected and still have these high scholarly values that are often uh, equated to the ivory tower. And I think you're seeing that in society. So you have to be really, really positive about Michigan State and, and its future. 
We just have to get through this rocky patch. But we have great people, and so with great people, we're going to be able to move through this. Maybe not without controversy, maybe not without a bump here or there, uh, but we're going to be able to make, get through this in a way that we're going to be more competitive. And we just simply have to believe it. Because the only rate limiter for us is us. It's not the money. It's really our passion, our vision, and our tenacity about staying the course of our values and our passion and tenacity about being able to, to get through difficult decisions in ways that, that are, are difficult emotionally. They're difficult intellectually. But if we can do that, we're going to be so we're going to be able to see this time in our history much like the period of time that was in post-World War II where there was lots of money and we took advantage of it. Now we have to take advantage when there's not so much money. And if we can do that, I think we're going to be successful in the future, and I know we can do that. And we just have to have more people believing that that's possible to do. And not only possible, but it's, it really is our requirement and our destiny. Additional videos from President Simon will be featured on this website throughout the year.